2 Kings chapter 1. Elijah denounces Ahaziah. After the death of Ahab, Moab rebelled against Israel. Now Ahaziah fell through the lattice in his upper chamber in Samaria and lay sick. So he sent messengers telling them, Go inquire of Baal Zebub, the, king, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this sickness. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore, thus says the Lord, You shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Elijah went. The messengers returned to the king, and he said to them, Why have you returned? And they said to him, There came a man to meet us, and he said to us, Go back to the king who sent you, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. He said to them, What kind of man was he who came to meet you and told you these things? They answered him, He wore a garment of hair with a belt of leather around about his waist, and he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty men with his fifty. He went up to Elijah, who was sitting on top of a hill, and said to him, O man of God, the king says, Come down. But Elijah answered the captain of the fifty, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then fire did come down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again the king sent him another captain of fifty men with his fifty, and he answered and said to him, O man of God, this is the king's order, come down quickly. But Elijah answered him, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again the king sent the captain of a third fifty and with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and entreated him, O man of God, please let my life and the life of these fifty servants of yours be precious in your sight. Behold, fire came down from heaven and consumed the two former captains of the fifty with their fifties. But now let my life be precious in your sight. Then the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down with him to the king and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So he died, according to the word of the Lord that Elijah had spoken. Jehoram became king in his place in the second year of Jero Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because Ahaziah had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? Second Kings chapter 2 Elijah taken to heaven. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on the way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the, pro of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Keep it quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up, and struck the water, and the water was parted to, one, to the one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. 
When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please, let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken up from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. And he took up the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to one side and to the other. And Elisha went over. Elisha succeeds Elijah. Now, when the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho saw him opposite them, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. And they said to him, Behold, now there are with your servants fifty strong men. Please let them go and seek your master. It may be that the spirit of the Lord has caught, up, caught him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, You shall not send. But when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send. They sent therefore fifty men, and for three days they sought him, but did not find him. And they came back to him while he was staying at Jericho. And he said to them, Did I not say to you, Do not go? Now the men of the city said to Elisha, Behold, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad, and the land is unfruitful. He said, Bring me a, a new bowl, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went to the spring of the water and threw salt in it, and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From now on neither death nor miscarriage shall come from it. So the water had been healed to this day, according to the word that Elisha spoke. He went up from there to Bethel, and while he was going up on the way, some small boys came out of the city and jeered at him, saying, Go up, you bald head! Go up, you bald head! And he turned around, and when he saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two she-bears came out of the woods and tore forty-two of the boys. From there he went on the Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. Second Kings chapter 3 Moab rebels against Israel In the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah, Je Jehoram, the son of Ahab became king over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned twelve years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, though not like his father and mother, for he put away the pillar of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he clung to the sin of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. He did not depart from it. Now Misha, king of Moab, was, was a sheep breeder, and he had to deliver to the king of Israel. 100,000 lambs, and the wool of 100,000 rams. But when Ahab died, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So King Jeho Jehoram marched out of Samaria at that time and mustered all Israel. And he went and sent word to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me to battle against Moab? And he said, I will go. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. Then he said, By which way shall we march? Jehoram answered, By the way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom. And when they had made a circuitous march of seven days, there was no water for the army or for the animals that followed them. Then the king of Israel said, Alas, the Lord has called these three kings to give them into the hand of Moab. And Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here, though whom we may inquire of the Lord? Then one of the king of Israel's servants answered, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. But the king of Israel said to him, 
No, it is not. It is the Lord who has called these three kings to give them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, were it not that I have regard for Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would rather I would neither look at you nor see you. But now bring me a musician. And when the musician played, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus says the Lord, I will make this dry streamed stream bed full of pools. For thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind or rain, but that steam bed shall be filled with water, so that you shall drink drink you, your livestock, and your animals. This is a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will also give the Moabites into your hand, and you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree, and stop up all springs of water, and ruin every good piece of land with stones. The next morning about the time of offering the sacrifice, behold, water came from the direction of Edom, till the country was filled with water. When all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, all who were able to put on armor from the youngest to the oldest were called out and were drawn up at the border. And when they rose early in the morning and the sun shone on the water, the Moabites saw the water opposite them as red as blood, and they said, This is blood. The kings have surely fought together and struck one another down. Now then, Moab, now then, Moab, to, to the spoil. But they came to the camp of Israel. The Israelites rose and struck the Moabites, till they fled before them. And they went forward, striking the Moabites as they went. And they overthrew the cities, and on every good piece of land every man threw a stone until it was covered. They stopped every spring of water and felled all the good trees, till only its stones were left in Kir Haraseth, and the slingers surrounded and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was going against him, he took with him seven hundred swordsmen to break through, opposite the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his oldest son, who was to reign in his place, and offered him for a burnt offering on the wall, and there came great wrath against Israel, and they withdrew from him and returned to their own land. Second Kings chapter 4 Elisha and the Widow's Oil Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that your servant feared the Lord, but the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go outside, borrow vessels, from all your borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons, and pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. Elisha and the Shunammite Woman One day, Elisha went on to Shunam, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold, now I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there, and he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said, and she, he said to him, Say now to her, See, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. 
And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. And he said, At this season, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, O man of God, do not lie to your servant. But the woman conceived, and she bore a son about that time the following spring, as Elisha had said to her. Elisha raises the Shunammite's son. When the child had grown, he went out one day to his father among the, the reapers. And he said to his father, Oh, my head, my head. The father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap till noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door behind him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys, that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, Why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, All is well. Then she saddled the donkey, and she said to her servant, Urge the animal on. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, Gehazi his servant, Look, there is the Shunammite woman, Shunammite. Run at once to meet her and say to her, Is all well with you? Is all well with your husband? Is all well with the child? And she answered, All is well. And when she came to the mountain to the man of God, she caught hold of his feet. And Gehazi came to push her away. But the man of God said, Leave her alone, for she is in bitter distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? He said to Gehazi, Tie up your garment and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet anyone, do not greet him, and if anyone greets you, do not reply, and lay my staff on the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was no sound or sign of life. Therefore he returned to meet him and told him, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in and shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and lay on the child, putting his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And as he lay stretched himself upon him, the flesh of the child became warm. Then he got up again and walked once back and forth in the house, and went up and stretched himself upon him. The child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Then he summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shun Shunammite. So he called her, and when she came to him, he said, Pick up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. Elisha purifies the deadly stew. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, when there was a famine in the land, and as the sons of the prophets were sitting before him, he said to his servant, Set on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. One of them went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered from it, it his lap full of wild gourds, and came out and cut them into the pot of stew, not knowing what they were. And when they poured out some of some for the men to eat, and they poured out some for the men to eat, but while they were eating of the stew, they cried out, O man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat it. He said, Then bring flour, and, and he threw it into the pot and, and said, Pour some out for the men that they may eat, and there was no harm in the pot. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and fresh ears of grain in a sack. And Elisha said, Give to the men that they may eat. But a servant said, How can I set this before a hundred men? So he repeated, Give them to the men, that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. So he, went, so he set it before them, and they ate, and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Second Kings chapter 5 Naaman healed of leprosy Naaman, commander of the army of the king of, the king of Syria, was a great man with, the ma with his master and in high favor because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. 
He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Now the Syrians on one of their raids had carried off a little girl from the land of Israel, and she worked in the service of Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, Would that my lord were with the prophet who was in Samaria? He would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord. Thus so and so spoke the girl from the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he went taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothes. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you Naaman, my servant, that you may cure him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God, to kill and to make alive, that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Only consider and see how he is seeking a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come now to me, that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away, saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. But his servants came near and said to him, My father, it is a great word the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? Has he actually said to you, Wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God, and his flesh was restored, like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Gehazi's Greed and Punishment Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and he came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel, so accept now a present from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Then Naaman said, If not, please let there be given to your servant two mules load of earth, for from now on your servant will will not offer burnt offering or sacrifice to any God, pardon your servant. When my master goes into the house of Rimon to worship there, leaning on my arm, and I bow myself in the house of Rimon, when when I bow myself in the house of Rimon, the Lord pardon your servant in this matter. He said to him, Go in peace. But when Naaman had gone from him a short distance, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, See, my master has spared this Naaman, the Syrian, in not accepting from his hand what he brought. As the Lord lives, I will run after him and get something from him. So Gehazi followed Naaman. And when Naaman saw someone running after him, he got down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master has sent me to say, There have just now come to me from the hill country of Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Please give them a talent of silver and two festal garments. And Naaman said, Be pleased to accept two talents. And he urged him and tied up two talents of silver in two bags with two festal garments and laid them on two of his servants. And they carried them before Gehazi. And when he came to the hill, he took, from, he took them from their hand and put them in the house. And he sent the men away and they departed. He went in and stood before his master and, and Elisha said to him, Where have you gone? Where have you been, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant went nowhere. But he said to him, Did not my heart go when the man turned from his chariot to meet you? Was it a time to accept money and garments, olive orchids and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male servants and female servants? Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and to your descendants forever. So he went out from his presence a leper like snow. Second Kings chapter 6 The Axe Head Recovered Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See, the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. 
Let us go to the Jordan, and each of us get there a log, and let us make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, Go. Then one of them said, Be pleased to go with your servants. And he, and he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Alas, my master, it was borrowed. Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, he cut off a stick and threw it in there, and made the iron float. And he said, Take it up. So he reached out his hand and took it. Horses and Chariots of Fire Once when the king of Syria was warring against Israel, he took counsel with his servant, saying, At such and such a place shall be my camp. But the man of God sent word to the king of Israel, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are going down there. And the king of Israel sent to the place about which the man of God told him. Thus he used to warn him, so that he saved himself there more than once or twice. And the mind of the king of Syria was greatly troubled because of this thing. And he called his servant and said, said to them, Will you not show me who of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. And he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and seize him. It was told him, Behold, he is in Dothan. So he sent their horses and chariots and a great army, and they came by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? He said, Do not be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And when the Syrians came down against him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Please strike this people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness in accordance with the prayer of Elisha. And Elisha said to them, This is not the way, and this is not the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. And he led them to Samaria. As soon as they entered Samaria, Elisha said, O Lord, open the eyes of these men, and that they may see. So the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. As soon as the king of Israel saw them, he said to Elisha, My father, shall I strike them down? Shall I strike them down? He answered, You shall not strike them down. Would you strike down those whom you have taken captive with your sword and your, with your bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. So he prepared for them a great feast, and when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master, and the Syrians did not come again on raids into the land of Israel. Ben-Hadad's Siege of Samaria Afterward, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, mustered his, mustered his entire army and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, as they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for eighty shekels of silver, and a fourth part of a cab of do dove's dung for five shekels of silver. Now, as the king of Israel was passing on by the wall, a woman cried out to him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord will not help you, how shall I help you? From the threshing floor or from the winepress? And the king asked her, What is your trouble? She answered, this woman said to me, Give your son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him, and on the next day I said to her, Give your son that we may eat him, but she has hidden her son. When the king heard the words of the woman, he tore his clothes. Now he was passing on by the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth beneath his body. And he said, May God do so to me, and more also, if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, remains on his shoulders today. Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. Now the king had dispatched a man from his presence, but before the messenger arrived, Elisha said to the elders, Do you see how this murderer has sent to take off my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold the door fast against him. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he was still speaking with them, the messenger came down to him and said, 
This trouble is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? Second Kings chapter 7 Elisha promises food. But Elisha, Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel, at the gate of Samaria. When the captain on whose hand the king leaned on, leaned, said to the man of God, If the Lord himself should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? But he said, You shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. The Syrians flee. Now there were four men who were lepers at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say, Let us enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. So now come, let us go over to the camp of the Syrians. If they spare our lives, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall di but die. So they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. But when they came to the edge of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no one there. For the Lord had made the army of the Syrians hear the sound of the chariots and of the horses, the sound of a great army, so that they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Egypt to come against us. So they fled away in the twilight and abandoned their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, leaving the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. And when the le these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into a tent and ate and drank, and they carried off silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried off things from it and went and hid them. Then he said to one another, Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news. If we were silent and wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. Now therefore come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they came and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no one to be seen or heard there. Nothing but the horses tied and the donkeys tied and the tents as they were. Then the gatekeepers called out, and it was told within the king's household. And the king rose in the night and said to his servants, I will tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the open country, thinking, When they come out of the city, we shall take them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants said, Let some men take five of the remaining horses, seeing that those who are left there will fare like the whole multitude of Israel who have already perished. Let us send and see. So they took two horsemen, and the king sent them after the army of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. So they went after them as far as the Jordan, and behold, all the way was littered with garments and equipment that the Syrians had thrown away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king, then the people went out and plundered the camp of the Syrians. So a sea of fl fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two seahs of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the captain on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. And the people trampled him in the gate, so that he died, as the man of God had said when the king came down to him. For when the man of God had said to the king, Two seahs of barley shall be sold for a shekel, and, two, and a seah of fine flour for a shekel, about this time tomorrow in the gate of Samaria. The captain had answered the man of God, If the Lord himself should make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he had said, You shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. And so it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. 2 Kings chapter 8 The Shumanite Land Restored Now Elisha had said to the woman whose son he had restored to life, Arise and depart with your household and sojourn wherever you can, for the Lord has called for a famine, and it will come upon the land for seven years. So the woman arose and did according to the word of the man of God. She went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years, and at the end of the seven years, when the woman returned from the land of the Philistines, she went to appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Now the king was talking with Gehazi, 
the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me all the great things that Elisha has done. And while he was telling the king how Elisha had restored the dead to life, behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life appealed to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, here is the woman, and here is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed an official for her, saying, Restore all that was hers, together with all the produce of the fields, from the day that she left the land until now. Hazael murders Ben-Hadad. Now Elisha came to Damascus. Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick, and when it was told him, the man of God has come here. The king said to Hazael, Take a present with you and go to meet the man of God and, and inquire of the Lord through him, saying, Shall I recover from the sickness? So Hazael went to meet him and took a present with him, all kinds of goods of Damascus, forty camel loads. When he came and stood before him, he said, Your son Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to you, saying, Shall I recover from the sickness? And Elisha said to him, Go, say to him, You shall certainly recover. But the Lord has shown me that he will certainly die. And he fixed his gaze and stared at him until he was embarrassed. And the man of God wept. And Hazael said, Why does my Lord weep? He answered, Because I know the evil that you will do to the people of Israel. You will set on fire their fortresses, and you will kill their young men with the sword, and dash in the dash in pieces their little ones, and rip open their pregnant women. And Hazael said, What is your servant, who is but a dog, that he should do this great thing? Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that you are to be king over Syria. Then he departed from Elisha and came to his master, who said to him, What did Elisha say to you? And he answered, He told me you would certainly recover. But the next day he took the bedcloth and dipped it in water and spread it over his face till he died and Hazael became king in his place. Jehoram reigns in Judah. In the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, when Jehoshaphat was king of Judah, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel as, as the house of Ahab had done, for the daughter of Ahab was his wife. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord was not willing to destroy Judah for the sake of David his servant, since he promised to give a lamp to him and to his sons forever. In his days, Edom revolted, re revolted from the rule of Judah and set up a king of their own. Then Joram passed over to Z Zaire with all his chariots and rose by night, and he and his chariot commanders struck the Edomites who had surrounded him, but his army fled home. So Edom revolted from the rule of Judah to this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. Now the rest of the acts of Joram and all that he had, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Joram slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Hazaiah, Haaz, ha Ahaziah, his son, reigned in his place. Ahaziah reigns in Judah. In the twelfth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name was, was Athaliah. She was a granddaughter of Omri, king of Israel. He also walked in the way of the house of Ahab and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, as the house of Ahab had done for he was the son-in-law to the house of Ahab. He went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to make war against Hazael, king of Syria, at Ramoth-Gilead, and the Syrians wounded Joram. And King Joram returned to be healed in Jez Jezreel of the wounds that, that the Syrians had given him at Ramah when he fought against Hazael, king of Syria. And Ahaziah, the son of Jeho Jehoram, king of Judah went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel, because he was sick. Second Kings chapter 9 Jehu anointed king of Israel. Then Elisha the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, 
Tie up your garments and take this flask of oil in your hand, and go to Ramoth Gilead, and when you arrive, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimshi, and go in and have him rise among, from among his fellows, and lead him to an inner chamber. Then take the flask of oil and pour it on his head, and say, Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee. Do not linger. So the young man, the servant of the prophet, went to Ramath Gilead, and when he came, behold, the commanders of the army were in council. And he said, I have a word for you, O commander. And Jehu said, To which of us all? And he said, To you, O commander. So he arose and went into the house, and the young man poured the oil on his head, saying to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anoint you king over, over the people of the Lord, over Israel. And you shall strike down the house of Ahab, your master, so that I may avenge on Je Jezebel the blood of my servants of the prophets and the blood of all the servants of the Lord. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab every male, bond or free, in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah, Ahijah and the dog shall eat Jezebel in the territory of Jezreel, and none shall bury her. Then he opened the door and fled. When Jehu came out, of the, came out to the servants of his master, and they said to him, Is all well? Why did this mad fellow come to you? And he said to them, You know the fellow and his talk. And they said, That is not true. Tell us now. And he said, Thus and so he spoke to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king over Israel. Then in haste, every man of them took his garment and put it under him on the bare steps, and they blew the trumpet and proclaimed, Jehu is king. Jehu assassinates Joram and Ahaziah. Thus Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Joram. Now Joram, with all Israel, had been on guard at Ramoth Gilead against Hazael, king of Syria. But the king but King Joram had returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds that the Syrians had given him when he fought with Hazael, the king of Syria. So Jehu said, If this is your decision, then let no one slip out of the city to go and tell the news in Jezreel. Then Jehu mounted his chariot and went to Jezreel, for Joram lay there, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, had come down to visit Joram. Now the watchman was standing on the tower in Jezreel, and he saw the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take a horseman and send to meet them, and let them say, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What do you have to do with peace? Turn around and ride behind me. And the watchman reported, saying, The messenger reached them, but he is not coming back. Then he sent out a second horseman who came to them and said, Thus the king has said, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, What do you have to do with peace? Turn around and ride behind me. Again the watchman reported, He reached to them, he reached them, but he did not come back. He is not coming back. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi, for he drives furiously. Joram said, Make ready, and they made ready his chariot. Then Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, set out, each in his own chariot, and went to meet Jehu and met him at the property of Nab Naboth the Jezreelite. And when Joram saw Je Jehu, he said, Is it peace, Jehu? He answered, What peace can there be, so long as the whorings and the sorceries of your mother Jezebel are so many? Then Joram reigned about, reigned about and fled, saying, Ahaziah, treachery, O Azahiah! And Jehu threw, drew his bow with his full strength and shot Joram between the shoulders, so that the arrow pierced his heart, and he sank in his chariot. Jehu said to Bidkar, his aide, Take him up and throw him on the plot of ground belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite. For remember, when you and I rode side by side behind Ahab his father, how the Lord made this pronouncement against him. As surely as I saw yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons, declares the Lord, I will repay you on this plot of ground. Now therefore take him up and throw him on the plot of ground in accordance to the word of the Lord. When Ahaziah the king of Judah saw this, 
he fled in the direction of Beth Hagen, and Jehu pursued him and said, Shoot him also, and they shot him in the chariot at the ascent of Gur, which is by Iblium. And he fled to Med Megiddo and died there. His servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in his tomb with his fathers in the city of David. In the eleventh year of Joram the son of Ahab, Ahaziah began to reign over Judah. Jehu executes Jezebel. When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her eyes and adorned her head and looked out of the window. And as Jehu entered the gate, she said, Is it peace, you Zimri murderer of your master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked out at him. He said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses, and they trampled on her. Then he went in and ate and drank, and he said, See now to this cursed woman and bury her, and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. But when they went to bury her, they found no more of her than the skull and the feet at, and the bombs of her hands. When they came back and told him, he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishbite. In the territory of Jezreel, the dog shall eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the corpse of Jezebel shall be as dung on the face of the field in the territory of Jezreel, so that no one can say, This is Jezebel. Second Kings chapter 10 Jehu slaughters Ahab's descendants. Now Ahab had seventy sons in Samaria. So Jehu wrote letters and sent them to Samaria, to the rulers of the city, to the elders, and to the guardians of the sons of Ahab, saying, now then, as soon as this letter comes to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, are there, and there are with you chariots and horses, fortified cities also, and weapons, select the best and fittest of your master's sons and set him on his father's throne and fight for your master's house. But they were exceedingly afraid and said, Behold, the two kings could not stand before him. How then can we stand? So he who was over the palace and he who was over the city, together with the elders and the guardians, sent to Jehu, saying, We are your servants, and we will do all that you tell us. We will not make any one king. Do whatever is good in your eyes. Then he wrote to them a second letter, saying, If you are on my side, and if you are ready to obey me, take the heads of your master's sons, and come to me at Jezreel tomorrow at this time. Now the king's sons, seventy persons, were with the great men of the city, who were bringing them up. And as soon as the letter came to them, he took the king's sons and slaughtered them, seventy persons, and put their heads in baskets and sent them to him at Jezreel. When the messenger came and told him they have brought the heads of the king's sons, he said, Lay them in two heaps at the entrance of the gate until the morning. Then in the morning he went out. He stood and said to all the people, You are innocent. It was I who conspired against my master and killed them. But who struck down all these? Know then that there shall fall to the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spoke concerning the house of Ahab, for the Lord has done what he said by his servant Elijah. So Jehu struck down all who remained in the house of Ahab in Jezreel, all his great men and his close friends and all his priests, until he left him none remaining. Then he set out and went to Samaria. On the way, when he was at Beth Echid of the shepherds, Jehu met the relatives of Ahaziah, king of Judah, and he said, Who are you? And they answered, We are the relatives of Ahaziah, and we came down to visit the royal princes and the sons of the queen mother. He said, Take them alive, and they took them alive, and slaughtered them at the pit of Beth Echid, forty-two persons, and he spared none of them. And when he departed from there, he met Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he greeted him and said to him, Is your heart true to my heart as mine is to yours? And Jehonadab answered, It is. Jehu said, If it is, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand, and Jehu took him up with, and Jehu took him, up with him into the chariot. And he said, Come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So he had him ride in his chariot, and when he came to Samaria, he struck down all who remained, 
to Ahab in Samaria till he had wiped them out according to the word of the Lord that he spoke to Elijah. Jehu strikes down the prophets of Baal. Then Jehu assembled all the people and said to them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu served him much. Now therefore call to me all the prophets of Baal, all his worshippers and all his priests. Let none be missing, for I have a great sacrifice to offer to Baal. Whoever is missing shall not live, but Jehu did it with cunning in order to destroy the worshippers of Baal, and Jehu ordered, Sanctify a solemn assembly for Baal. So they proclaimed it. And Jehu sent throughout all Israel, and all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left who did not come. And they entered the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was filled from one end to the other. He said to him who was in charge of the wardrobe, Bring out the vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. So he brought out, all, brought out the vestments for them. Then Jehu went into the house of Baal with Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, and he said to the worshippers of Baal, Search and see that there is no servant of the Lord here among you, but only the worshippers of Baal. Then they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings. Now Jehu had stationed eighty men outside and said, The man who allows any of those whom I gave, give into your hands to escape shall forfeit his life. So as soon as he had made an end of offering, the burnt offering, Jehu said to the guard and to the officers, Go in and strike them down. Let not a man escape. So when they put them, so when they put them to the sword, the guard and all the officers cast them out and went into the inner room of the house of Baal, and they brought out the pillar that was in the house of Baal and burned it. And they demolished the pillar of Baal and demolished the house of Baal and made it a latrine to this day. Jehu reigns in Israel. Thus Jehu wiped out Baal from Israel, but Jehu did not turn aside from the sins of, of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, which he made Israel to sin, that is, the golden calves that were in Bethel and in Dan. And the Lord said to Jehu, Because you have done well in carrying out what is right in my eyes, and have done to the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart, your sons of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu was not careful to walk in the law of the Lord, the God of Israel, with all his heart. He did not turn from the sins of Jeroboam, which he made Israel to sin. In those days the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel. Hazael defeated them throughout the territory of Israel, from the Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, the Gadites, and the Reubenites, and the Man Manassites, from er Aror, which is by the valley of Arnon, that is Gilead and ba Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu and all that he did and all his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So Jehu slept with his fathers as they buried him in Samaria. And Jeho Jehoahaz, his son, reigned in his place. The time that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was 28 years. Second Kings chapter 11 Athaliah reigns in Judah. Now when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal family. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the king's sons who were being put to death. And she put him and his nurse in a bedroom. Thus they hid him from Athaliah, so that he was not put to death. And he remained with her six years, hidden in the house of the Lord, while Athaliah reigned over the land. Joash anointed king in Judah. But in the seventh year Jehoiada sent and brought the captains of the Karites and of the guards and had them come to him in the house of the Lord. And he made a covenant with them and put them under oath in the house of the Lord. And he showed them the king's sons, and he commanded them, This is the thing that you shall do. One third of you, those who come off duty on the Sabbath and guard the king's house. Another third, being at the gate, sir, and a third at the gate behind the guards, shall guard the palace and the two divisions of you which come on duty in force on the Sabbath and guard the house of the Lord on behalf of the king, shall surround the king each with his weapons in his hand. And whoever approaches the ranks is to be put to death. Be with the king when he goes out and when he comes in. 
The captains did according to, to all that Jehoadah the priest commanded, and they each brought his men who were to go off duty on the Sabbath with those who were to come on duty on the Sabbath and come to Jehoadah the priest. And the priest gave to the captains the spears and the shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of the Lord. And the guards stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, from the south side of the house to the north side of the house, around the altar and the house on behalf of the king. Then he brought out the king's son and put the crown on him and gave him the testimony. And they proclaimed him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, Long live the king. When Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she went into the house of the Lord to the people. And when she looked, there was the king standing by the pillar according to the custom and the captains and the trumpeters beside the king, and all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets. And Athaliah tore her clothes and cried, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoiada the priest commanded, by, commanded the captains, who were set over the army, Bring her out between the ranks and put to death with the sword anyone who follows her. For the priest said, Let her not be put to death in the house of the Lord. So they laid hands on her, and she went through the horse's entrance, to the king's house, and there she was put to death. And Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people, that they should be the Lord's people, and also between the king and the people. Then all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and tore it down. His altars and his images they broke into pieces, and they killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest posted watchmen over the house of the Lord, and he took ca the captains, the Karites, the guards, and all the people of the land, and they brought the king down from the house of the Lord, marching through the gate of the guards to the king's house, and he took his seat on the throne of the kings. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet after Athaliah had been put to death with a sword at the king's house. Second Kings chapter 12 Jehoash reigns in Judah. Jehoash was seven years old when he began to reign. In the seventh year of Jehu, Jehoash began to reign, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zebiah of Beersheba, and Jehoash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all his days, because Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people continued to sacrifice and make offerings on the high places. Jehoash repairs the temple. Jehoash said to the priests, All the money of the holy things that is brought into the house of the Lord, the money for which each man is assessed, the money from the assessment of persons, and the money that a man's heart prompts him to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priests take, each from his donor, and let him repair the house wherever, they may, wherever any need of repairs is discovered. But the twenty-third year of King Jehoash, the priests had made no repairs on the house. Therefore King Jehoash summoned Jehoiada, the priest, and the other priests, and said to them, Why are you not repairing the house? Now therefore take no more money from your donors, but hand it over for the repair of the house. So the priests agreed that they should take no more money from the people, and that they should not, and that they should not repair the house. Then Jehoiada, the priest, took a chest and bore it bored a hole in the lid of it, and set it beside the altar on the right side as they entered the house of the Lord. And the priests who guarded the threshold put in, all, put in it all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. And whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, the king's secretary and the high priest came up, and they beg, bagged and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Then they would give the money that was weighed out into the hands of the workmen who had who had the oversight of the house of the Lord, and they paid out to the carpenters and the builders who worked on the house of the Lord, and to the masons and the stone cutters, as well as the, to buy the timber and quarried stone for making repairs on the house of the Lord, and for any outlay for the repairs of the house. But there were not made for the house of the Lord basins of silver, snuffers, bowls, trumpets, of, or any vessels of gold or of silver, from the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, for that was given to the workmen who were repairing the house of the Lord with it. And they did not ask for an accounting from the men whose hand they delivered the money to pay out to the workmen, for they dealt honestly. 
The money from the guilt offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord. It belonged to the priests. At that time, Hazael, king of Syria, went up and fought against Gath and took it. But when Hazael set his face to go up against Jerusalem, Jehoash, king of Judah, took all the sacred gifts that Jehoshaphat and Joram, Jehoram and Ahaziah, his father, the kings of Judah, had dedicated, and his own sacred gifts, and all the gold that was found in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and of the king's house, and sent these to Hazael, king of Syria. Then Hazael went away from Jerusalem. The Death of Joash Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? His servants arose and made a conspiracy and struck down Joash in the house of Milo on the, on the way that goes down to Silla. It was Jozakar, the son of Shemith, and Jeho Jehazabad, the son of Shomer, his servants, who struck him down so that he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the city of David, and Amaziah, his son, reigned in his place. Second Kings chapter 13 Jehoahaz reigns in Israel. In the twenty-third year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel in Samaria. And he reigned seventeen years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin. He did not depart from them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he gave them continually into the hand of Hazael, king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, ben the son of Hazael. Then Jehoahaz sought the favor of the Lord, and the Lord listened to him. For he saw the oppression of Israel, how the king of Syria oppressed them. Therefore, the Lord gave Israel a savior so that they escaped from the hand of the Syrians and the people of Israel lived in their homes as formerly. Nevertheless, they did not depart from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, which he made Israel to sin, but walked in them, and the Asherah also remained in Samaria. For there was not left to Jehoahaz an army of more than fifty horsemen and ten chariots and ten thousand footmen. For the king of Syria had destroyed them and made them like the dust at threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Jeho Jehoahaz and all that he did and his might are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehoahaz slept with his fathers and they buried him in Samaria and Joash his son reigned in his place. Jehoash reigns in Israel. In the 37th year of Joash king of Judah Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned sixteen years. He also did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did not depart from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he made Israel to sin, but he walked in them. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did, and the might with which he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book? in the chronic book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. So Joash slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat on his throne. And Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. The death of Elisha. Now when Elisha had fallen sick with the illness of which he was to die, Joash, king of Israel, went down to him and wept before him, crying, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen, and Elisha said to him, Take a bow and arrows. So he took a bow and arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, Draw the bow, and he drew it. And Elisha laid his hands on the king's hands, and he said, Open the window eastward, and he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot, and he shot. And he said, The Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Syria, for you shall fight the Syrians in Aphek until you have made an end of them. And he said, Take the arrows, and he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground with them. And he struck three times and stopped. Then the man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck down Syria until you had made an end of it. But now you will strike down Syria only three times. So Elisha died, and they buried him. Now bands of Moabites used to invite, invade the land in the spring of the year. And as a man was being buried, behold, 
a marauding, a marauding band was seen and the man was thrown into the grave of Elisha. And as soon as the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood on his feet. Now Hazael, king of Syria, oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz. But the Lord was gracious to them and had compassion on them. And he turned toward them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and would not destroy them, nor has he cast them from his presence until now. When Hazael, king of Syria, died, Ben-Hadad, his son, became king in his place. Then Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, took again from Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, the cities that he had taken from Jehoahaz, his father in war. Three times Joash defeated him and recovered the cities of Israel.